Hello and welcome to Mount San Antonio College, a spot in the 3C2A championship on the line here tonight with a round three matchup pitting the Mount San Antonio College Mounties and the Long Beach City College Vikings. For the Mounties, they renew their oldest rivalry in the entire 3C2A. It's the 31st meeting all time between these two teams. It is a rivalry that has been fairly one-sided in favor of the Mounties, including this very season where they meet for the fourth time tonight with the first three meetings all going to the Mounties, but a lot on the line tonight. And the Vikings looking to upset things and punch their ticket to the championship. Starting lineups being introduced and not a lot of changes as you would expect for either coach coming into the game tonight. The Mounties going with their standard starting five, Carly Bolden, Kehlani Richardson, Anissa Moncrief, South Player of the Year, Deja Mitchell, and Isabella Roderick. Meanwhile, the Vikings counter with a sensational trio of guards, Kimberly Cruz Martinez, Haley Garcia, Bree Boyd, along with Giselle Marino, uh, and Shioma Okenwa. So again, both these teams have been very steady all season long in terms of their starting five. Very few changes and none here tonight. The Vikings come in with a record overall of 19 and nine. They struggled somewhat out of the gate starting eight and nine, but they have gone 11 and 0 since, making it here to round three. Meanwhile, the Mounties have been dominant from the outset. They come in at 27 and two. They have won 23 straight, and they have gone through the gauntlet in terms of the rest of the three C2A. The Mounties have tested themselves all season long. Meanwhile, for Long Beach, uh, it's been much the same situation. In fact, when you look at their record to start the season, they were eight and nine after 17 games, but 16 of those 17 games came against teams that had gone on to make the postseason. They were seven and nine. Since then, uh, they've won 11 straight. Three of those wins have come against playoff teams, but obviously the Vikings were a team that was decidedly better than their record would have indicated when they sat at eight and nine. So not a big surprise that the nine seed pulls the mild upset going to Victor Valley last Saturday and posting the win to advance to round three, but they will have a significant challenge here tonight against the Mounties who come in having lost just two games on the season. Bolden on the dribble, they work it around to Moncrief. This is Richardson, first team all state along with Mitchell, who as we mentioned at the top, was the South player of the year and the floater from Mitchell gets things going for the Mounties. They grab the two nothing late. This is Kimberly Cruz Martinez at the controls. I mentioned the sensational trio of guards. This is Okenwa, but it was Boyd, Marino, and Cruz Martinez leading the way, all scoring in double figures. In fact, Boyd was a second team All-South selection. Knocked out of play by Okenwa. Certainly a lot of the success in the matchup so far between these two teams has to do with how well the Mounties have done defending Bree Boyd, the leading scorer for the Vikings. In the three games, Boyd averaging a little under 10 points a game and shooting under 30% from the floor. So the Vikings will look to get Boyd untracked here tonight, and certainly that would be a big part of a Viking win should they be able to get one. Okenwa holding. Now starts a move, working on Roderick, forces one up with the left hand and scores. So Okenwa, who has been the other side of that coin, she has been terrific against the Mounties all season. Pull up for Richardson is good. Mounties go back up 4-2. Started to say Okenwa, averaging just under 12 points a game in the three matchups. That is decidedly over her season average, which is just over eight points a game. So she has been a puzzle for the Mounties. Shot missed by Marino. Her first shot won't go. Loose ball recovered by the Vikings. Cruz Martinez leading the break. This is Boyd. Boyd will fire and hit. Are they going to call that a long two? Well, no, no, they're going to call that a three. So 5-4. The Vikings grab the lead on the three by Cruz Martinez.
Bolden will walk it over the timeline. They work it down low to Roderick on the cut, but she missed the layup. Kenwa with the board. Vikings looking to extend on the one-point lead. Hard drive. Cruz Martinez up and good. Well, certainly getting their fourth look at the Mounties this season, the Vikings are hardly going to be intimidated. This is obviously a team they know well. These are the champions in the South Coast, North and South. The Mounties, an undefeated conference season in the North to win the championship, and the Vikings undefeated in the South to win the South Coast South. Marino looking for an Okenwa screen. Boyd holding outside. Pulls up from 18, off the back iron and the long rebound, out to Moncrief. Mounties want to run, it's a two on two. Mitchell in on Marino, scoop up and good. Four for Mitchell. And gives the Mounties, or pulls the Mounties within one at 7-6. Just underway, 6-25 and counting remaining in the first quarter. Round three here tonight across the 3C2A. Eight spots in the championship on the line here tonight. Martinez just flips it up and in after she nearly lost her foot and quick start for Kimberly Cruz Martinez. I've got Cruz Martinez with seven. Off of Roderick and out of play over to the Vikings. They've got the three-point lead and the ball. Last meeting was back on January 19th. That was here. And the Mounties ran away with it, 86-57. Previous two meetings both on neutral courts. And in the second meeting back on December 8th, it was a one-point win for the Mounties. That was as close as the Vikings have been able to get. Obviously, that one came down to the final 30 seconds. In fact, the Vikings had a shot. The Mounties took a shot with nine seconds remaining and missed, but Deja Mitchell, as she has done all season long, came up with a big play, getting an offensive rebound, getting the ball back for the Mounties. She did eventually miss a couple of free throws, but took some time off the clock. So I'm getting word that there was a technical foul at the start of the game that accounted for one of the points. So I believe we thought one was maybe a long three. Turns out it was a two. Meanwhile, Bolden coast to coast, up and good. So that accounts for the extra point. Vikings have the lead 9-8 after the Bolden drive. Midway through the first. Lonnie Tunu, terrific move, spinning back to her right. Gets the shot to go. So Tunu off the bench. Meanwhile, Lana Diaz has checked in for the Mounties. Might have had that one partially blocked. Marino looking to run, but no numbers. Now starts a drive on Mitchell. Fakes, shot up, won't go. Rebound off to Richardson. Three-point lead for the Vikings. Richardson open three, no good. Long rebound off to Marino. That was a good look for Delani Richardson. She shoots 34% from long range on the season. But that one won't go. Cruz Martinez around the high screen. Stripped by Bolden. Bolden on the drive ahead to Mitchell. In on Marino, goes to the Euro step. No foul called, the shot out of bounds and over to the Vikings. So Mitchell looking for a foul, but the defense good from Marino. The lead is three for the Vikings. 
Hopefully our scoreboard will update momentarily. But it's 11-8. Bree Boyd at the controls. Averages just under 18 points a game. Checked by Bolden. And the three is good. So Boyd setting up the good look. And the Vikings open up their largest lead at six. Jump stop for Richardson, missed everything. Rebound fought for, controlled by Diaz, and a foul call. What a start for Tunu. Had the terrific move moments ago, and then buries the three. She's got a quick five off the bench. to have 13 on perfect shooting in an earlier matchup between these two teams. So she has had some success against the Mounties and she's off to a quick start here. Diaz able to hit the first free throw. Lana Diaz, a 77% foul shooter. Averages five and a half points a game. Looking good. Well, rebounding certainly figures to be a storyline here tonight. The Mounties, as is so often the case, among the best rebounding teams in the entire 3C2A, near steal for Richardson. But recovered by Robinson, who's checked in. And now the whistle off the ball. This is going to go against Delani Richardson. So Michaela Robinson will bring it in. Just to stay with the point, the Mounties are in the top 10 in terms of rebound differential. Plus 14 rebounds a game for the season. But you go back to the second matchup between these two teams when the Vikings very nearly were able to get the win, and it was the Vikings who out-rebounded the Mounties in that game. And they'll need to do that here tonight. One would have to believe. Shot clock violation will give it back to the Mounties. The Mounties in the third matchup that they dominated between these two teams right at the ship and decidedly out-rebounded the Vikings en route to the easy win here. So we'll keep an eye on the boards here tonight. Of course, the Vikings shooting the ball well early, making that something of a moot point. Moncrief and working around to Mitchell, out of the double team. Richardson open for three again, ribbing now. Marino snatches down the board. Fast moving first period. Each team has committed only one foul. Robinson starts a drive, goes to the left hand, too strong. Rebound pulled down by the Mounties. Asia Gibson has checked in. Moncrief from the corner hits. Anissa Moncrief knocks down the jumper. The Mounties creep back within two. 14-12. Cruz Martinez, a standing dribble. Chioma Kenwa looking for Tunu down low. Working on Moncrief, and Moncrief with the block. Mitchell pulls down the board. Great pass to Gibson, missed the layup. Boy, Asia Gibson had to stretch out to come down with that ball, but did, and then missed the layup. Marino fakes, leaner won't go. Marino with the rebound off the floor and lays it up and in. Giselle Marino following her own miss. Vikings maintain the lead at four. Mitchell had a notion, now pulls up from 10 feet, shot good and a foul. Well, it looked for just a moment as though Deja Mitchell had passed on the open shot and dribbled into a double team, but when you're the South Player of the Year, you have a tendency to overcome such things. And instead draws the foul on Okenwa and has a chance 
to make it a three-point play. Missed the free throw. Long rebound going to be chased down by Boulder. Now the Mounties can tie it up or take the lead with a long one. Bolden. Work it around to Mitchell. Gibson traveled. Yeah, just started the move without getting that ball on the floor. 48.9 remaining here in the first quarter. Well, the Vikings should be pretty comfortable playing here in one of the oddities in scheduling. This is the 29th game of the year for the Vikings, and they've played just seven at home. So they have spent a lot of time on the road or on a neutral court. Floater in and out for Cruz Martinez, but the layup up and good. Shiomo Kenwa on the offensive boards. Four-point lead for the Vikings. High screen for Bolden. Looking for a Diaz screen. Bolden drives the lane, hangs, shot won't go. Diaz tries to corral, it's out of play. It's going to stay with Mount Sack. 5.3 remaining in the opening quarter. Again, the Vikings get here by virtue of the win last Saturday in round two at Victor Valley. It's a long trip. They get the nine-point win to move on to round three. Tipped on the inbound. And that pass tipped out of play with 2.3. The Vikings will have it. We'll see if they have enough time for a shot. The Mounties, meanwhile, advancing after a win over San Diego Mesa. After a first-round bye, a 12-point win in round two. Shot from 35 around and out. We're through one. Long Beach on top, 18-14. It's round three, the three C two A. Here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Start of the second quarter. Pressure from the Mounties, and they get it into Kimberly Cruz Martinez. Cruz Martinez, along with Haley Garcia, Bree Boyd, Giselle Marino, Chiomo Kenwa, starting five back on the floor for the Vikings. That one ripped away by Deja Mitchell, looking for Richardson. Shot from 10 feet, around and out. Diaz had a good look, but couldn't get it to go. It's Gibson, Richardson, Bolden, Diaz, and Mitchell on the floor for the Mounties to start the second quarter. Jump ball. Well, with the exception of the 86 points the Mounties put up in the last meeting between these two teams, typically the pace has been more in the high 50s to very low 60s between these teams. So this was a fast start in the first quarter. Hot shooting, certainly for the Vikings, en route to the four-point lead. 
Marino able to get a hand on the entry pass, but it ends up back with the Mounties. Bolden, they get it to Mitchell. Mitchell forces one up, won't go late, whistle comes in. This is going to go against Deja Mitchell. Take a look at a couple of quick scores. Again, busy night. Regional finals all over the state. Early lead for Moore Park in that matchup with Ventura. Glendale and Palomar, a matchup of three and a six seed. Obviously, a couple of programs that have had a lot of success. But one spot between the two of them. Okenwa missed the shot. Mitchell pulls down the board. Ahead to Bolden. Bolden, hard drive, lays it up. Won't go. Didn't get the roll. And the Vikings content to slow it down. Mounties, the top team in the South, number one seed. Ranked second in the 3C2A in the most recent rankings. Good feed to Okenwa. And Okenwa continues to have success against the Mounties. 20 to 14. Okenwa's got six to lead the way for the Vikings. Diaz from 10 feet. Off to Cruz Martinez. Cruz Martinez jets into the front court. Finds Boyd open, step back three, won't go. Richardson over the back. This has got to go against Delani Richardson. And for Richardson, that's her first foul. No, they're going to say this is against. It's going to belong to the Mounties. All right, well, that's what I get for trying to make the call. Moncrief outside to Richardson. Garcia able to jump the passing lane, but didn't get the steal. Instead, they look for Mitchell to reverse around and out. Rebound off to Cruz Martinez. Marino puts it on the floor. Runner too strong. Rebound tapped outside. The Vikings with another chance. Rebounds close right now. Slight advantage for the Vikings. 13-10 overall. Floater from Cruz Martinez. And one of that trio of outstanding freshman guards, Cruz Martinez, along with Giselle Marino and Bree Boyd. 20 to 14. Diaz again open from 10 feet. That one rattles home. Well, they're daring Diaz to knock down that shot. And she does that time. 22-16, the Vikings with the six-point lead in the ball. Tunu into the lane, looking for Marina, who can't keep it alive. Vikings turn it over. S seventh turnover for the Vikings, along with Seven with, for the Mounties, I should say. Moncrief. Top to Richardson. Mitchell pulls up from 12 feet. This is the shot, and it's off to Boyd. Boyd having an outstanding run in the postseason. Averaging 17 a game over the first two wins. But the Mounties seem determined not to let Bree Boyd beat them this season. So far it's worked as Marino knocks it down from 12 feet. But it's the Vikings who have the eight point lead. Mounties had a slow first half in the win against San Diego Mesa. Now Diaz starting to feel it as she hits from the elbow to get the Mounties back within six. Four eighteen. Tunu gets a Marino screen. Back outside, Marino for three, in and out. Rebound, chased down by Moncrief. Head to Bolden. Diaz skips for Richardson. 
Richardson step back three. The high Urker is good. Man. Delani Richardson. And you got to be careful. It looked like she might have had a little something to say to Bree Boyd on her way down the court. And you have the decided feeling that this one could be very close down the stretch. You want to be very careful about picking up a technical. That's the kind of thing that we have seen called before. Marino gets it back, pulls up from 18, rattles out. Kind of things we've seen sway games, too. Absolutely. Mike Spada joining us on the broadcast. 24-21. Garcia goes down in the blocking call. That was very close to being an offensive foul. You see the arm extend here at the end. Of the I think yeah, that's two on Martinez. Haley Garcia with her first foul just a fraction of a second late getting there. Timeout on the floor. It's a 30-second timeout. And, uh, Mike, I know we've been uh, working a little bit, also producing the game here tonight, but uh, <laughs> your thoughts so far, it looks like the uh, Vikings shooting the ball well, and right now that's got him in the lead. Well, this isn't typical of a Brian Critchlow-led team uh, coming in. They get uh, something happened uh, during warm-ups. I don't know if it was some type of roster situation, but uh, or maybe something happened during the pregame. We don't know. We haven't been, been given that information. But Mount Sac looks a little flat here, and Long Beach is pounced. Uh, and this is, like you said earlier in the broadcast, uh, a heated rivalry. Very familiar foes. And uh, right now, Long Beach with a three-point lead. I mentioned the gauntlet that the Mounties had gone through this season. 27-2, and two, but they have not played a soft schedule. They're 17-2 and two against teams that are in the postseason this year. So this is a team, uh, the reason I bring it up is that uh, this is the type of team that maybe uh, can become prone to uh, playing in spurts a little bit. They've ch been challenged all season long, and they've been able to come up with uh, the points when they've needed them to wit as Bolden knocks down a three. Or did they call that a long two? It looks like they're going to call that a long two for Bolden. No, they're, they're going to, it's 24, 24 all. Okay, so that is a three to tie it up. Okenwa, short corner, shot won't go. Moncrief, another rebound. Bolden leaking out in a foot race with Marino. She's going to win it. Bolden lays it up and in, and here come the Mounties. They have the lead, 26-24. You go back to the previous round. The Mounties, uh, just a one-point game with San Diego Mesa, the 16 seed in round two before the Mounties pulled away, eventually winning it by 12. But how long can you get away with that kind of thing? It gets more and more tenuous with each passing round. Up top to Richardson. Three on the way, a short, long rebound. Mounties have it back. Little off kilter pass there. Jeff, I'm yep. pretty impressed with the sets that Mount Sac has been running. They've been getting some pretty good looks. Haven't seen a lot of them fall, but with a two-point lead right now, Longreach is going to have to right the ship. I believe this is a 10-0 run for the Mounties after the Vikings had opened up their largest lead at eight. But the Mounties seem to have righted the ship for the moment, particularly on the defensive end. Runner from Cruz Martinez, no good. Offensive rebound, the shot too strong. Another chance, and it's Okenwa that cleans it up. Shioma Okenwa with eight. A lot of size on that front line for Long Beach City, so expect them to be aggressive on the offensive boards. We see the putback there. They continue to have an edge in rebounding. Diaz out of the double team. Nice. They drop it for Mon Moncrief, who doesn't get the roll. That's a great set. Nice open shot in the short corner. Moncrief just can't get it to fall. Marino, a little stutter step. Runner won't go. Late whistle comes in. Richardson goes down. The foul going to go against Long Beach City. 2.04 remaining in the first half. It's a great job. Getting to the spot outside of the area. Giselle Marino, another interesting story, a freshman 
in the first couple of months of the season, averaging a little under nine points a game, but then found her groove after the first of the year since January 1st, averaging just under 17 a game. So she's really stepped into a much bigger role offensively as this season has gone on. Cruz Martinez has that one stripped on the way up. And it's going to be off of Long Beach. Yeah, I think she just loses it going up. Pretty now good defense there. Alexis Brown with the defense, and Cruz Martinez loses the handle. So Brown will bring it up. Or I should say this is Brown. Getting it from Asia Gibson. Diaz juggles, and then Garcia gets a hand in there. Able to dig it out. And we are having an issue with our score body here, so uh, bear with us, everybody. Interesting. Richardson on the floor. It's Mitchell with a rest, but it's Brown along with Gibson. Richardson, Moncrief, and Diaz on the floor as Deja Mitchell gets a blow for the Mounties. Marino from 16. Rimming now. Rebound off to Diaz. Brown works it around to Gibson. Shot clock at 13. Looking for Diaz high post. Garcia on the double team, able to dig it out. Vikings have the steal. Two on three. Cruz Martinez able to find Boyd. Fake shot, no. Rebound off to Richardson. Looking for Brown in from nice the block. left. That shot blocked by Tunin. Luis Martinez, good feed, Marino lays it in. Kimberly Cruz Martinez with the dime, 28-26. Top to Richardson. This is where you would expect to see Richardson look for a shot. Second leading scorer. For the Mounties on the season, trailing only Mitchell. But it's Gibson who has that one blocked out of play. 9.1 remaining a one-second difference shot clock and game clock as Gibson will bring it in. Yeah, interesting. Richardson in the corner. Looking down low. Moncrief outside, three on the way, no good. At the buzzer, halftime from Mount Sac. And it's the Vikings with a 28-26 lead as the teams head for the locker rooms. You're watching the 3C to a regional final from Mount San Antonio College on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
Start of the third quarter. Mounties for the second consecutive round, trailing at the half. It's time by two, but they have it first in an offensive rebound. Back up top to Bolden. Richardson arcs the three, rims high, no good. Rebound tapped and controlled by Garcia. Richardson struggling from the floor in the postseason. She was just two of 12 in the win over Mesa, and she's two of eight so far tonight. Ill-advised pass from Bolden and an easy steal for Cruz Martinez. Marino and Okenwa lead the way for the Vikings with eight points each. Carly Bolden with seven leading the way for the Mounties. No foul trouble to speak of for either team. Nobody with more than one foul. Marino, well, contact from Mitchell, no foul called. And the rebound off to Moncrief. Yeah, they're letting him play for sure. Yeah, just two fouls. Clean steal for Cruz Martinez. Bolden with her and taps it away to avert the layup for Cruz Martinez, but Kimberly Cruz Martinez continues to do it all. Eight and a half points to go along with eight rebounds, six assists, and two and a half steals per game in the playoffs so far. And that was a big turnover. It gets the chance for Boyd, who lays it up and in. First field goal for Bree Boyd. Second team all state. She's got three in the game after that basket. So the Mounties continue to do a good job making someone else beat him, but Boyd that time able to get into the book. Another steal for Cruz Martinez. Picks it up in the lane, finds Boyd. The leaner from Boyd is up and good. Now Bree Boyd starting to get it going. She's got five. A quick 4-0 run to start the second half, and the Vikings have the lead back to six. They've led by as many as eight. Bolden might have got away with a little push off against Garcia. Moncrief. Bolden open for three, splash. Carly Bolden feeling it. She's got 10 to lead all scorers. That's a big bucket for the Mounties early in the third, still a lot of time to go. But the Vikings were gaining in confidence and Bolden with that three gets the Mounties back within three. Marino, checked by Mitchell. Hard defense from Mitchell, down low. 
Shot up and good. Vikings back out in front by five. Now Richardson knocks down the shot. And for Delani Richardson, first team, all state in the south. And she has got to keep shooting the ball. And she knows it. And that was a gutsy shot. Continues to fire. Hits that three to get the Mounties back within two. Boyd, who already has six in the third, the runner too strong. Rebound off to Mitchell. Richardson leaking out, Garcia right there. Richardson forces one up, around and out. Diaz trying to, I should say, Roderick keeps it alive and gets it back. Outside, Richardson looking for back-to-back -back three. She's got it. Delani Richardson's feeling it. The Mounties back out in front by one. That's a big-time response from Delani Richardson. The struggles from the floor in the postseason. But back-to-back -back threes. Now a steal by Bolden. Bolden in on Cruz Martinez to the left hand. And again, now look out because Bolden's doing a little bit of talking again. After that made layup on the steal. And there's a little chirping going down there, Michael. And as you pointed out earlier here in the third quarter, as we'll keep it here with the timeout on the floor, they're letting them play. And you wonder if they're, if that is going to bleed into, they're going to let them do a little bit of talking on the floor as well. Certainly so far, it seems like that's the case. It's not been a quick, uh, quick whistle. But uh, the, the, uh, a lot of leniency here, and we see here at the tail end of this play, and you have to be careful. This yeah. is a this is a tight game. Yep. You're only up by three now after Richardson just pretty much loses her mind. I think that's three triples in a row as we see right there on the replay. Yep. And now Mount Sack out in front. The Long Beach has played well enough to this point to be ahead, but they find themselves down by three. Well, there's been a little bit of talking. About, and now, I believe if my memory serves, it was Delani Richardson who was doing a little bit of uh, maybe uh, drawing a little bit back and forth in the first half. But I want to be careful that I'm not 100% sure on that, obviously. And there's a little bit of speculation for us up here. But it seems pretty clear looking at the body language and some of the talking that that is going on as Tunu on the drive is fouled. She'll head to the line. Alani uh, Tunu. 76% foul shooter, averaging 6.6 .6 a game, and the free throw is up and good. This is on the second, long rebound and a chance for the Vikings to get three the hard way. Cruz Martinez now wants to slow it down. Shot clock at 18. Around that high screen, picked up by Richardson. Cruz Martinez still dancing. On the drive, step back, shot from 18 is good. Kayla Robinson. Big shot. And boy, both these teams here tonight have responded when, when things maybe start to get away. Showing. A lot of resilience out there on both sides in a game that means so much for both these teams. Diaz fouled on the shot. Well, they continue to send that hard double with Garcia, and that time Garcia gets Diaz with the body and will send Alana Diaz to the line. Diaz, along with Asia Gibson, played big roles off the bench in the win against San Diego Mesa last Saturday night. 19 points between the two of them. This uh, Mountie team that has been generally led by that starting five for much of the season. But Diaz and Gibson both coming up big off the bench offensively and perhaps just when the Mounties needed it in a one-point game at the half against the Mesa team that was definitely hanging around. And they 
both deliver. As does Diaz with a couple of free throws there. Mounties back out in front. We're midway through the third. 39-37. Two new Marino on the floor along with Kristen Duncan, Michaela Robinson, and Kimberly Cruz Martinez for the Vikings. So no Bree Boyd on the floor for the moment. Two new feeds Marino. Marino back outside near Steele. Duncan on the drive looking for two new, but the pass deflected and stolen. Brown able to chase it down for the Mounties. Meanwhile, the Mounties give it back. Steal for Marino. Marino weaves into the front court, working on Brown. Finds two new tries to step through. And the foul, no, they're going to call the travel before he contacted. I think that's a good call. Yeah, two new. Don't quite have the tail end there, but the double team comes and tried to make that long step through. And That was a step through that more than a few players in the NBA were going to have a difficult time making. Cruz Martinez with another steal. In the NBA, you probably get away with it. <laughs> Whistle and a foul called on the drive. Kimberly Cruz Martinez going to head back to the line. Like, you got to be impressed with Kimberly Cruz Martinez. And uh, she's done everything out here tonight and all postseason long. But I also like the recognition with Bree Boyd on the bench, Cruz Martinez gets aggressive and looks for an opportunity to get to the line herself. It's another heady play. And she will head to the line for a couple of free throws. She'll take the free points. She's got six in the game. To go along with three rebounds, three assists, another missed free throw. So a couple of missed free throws here in this third quarter. And as we've talked about, this one could very easily go down to the wire. 71% foul shooter. Misses them both. Bolden looking for a Diaz screen. Layup no good. Diaz has the rebound in a crowd. Gibson steps through and lays it in. Mounties keep it alive. Diaz working hard on the boards, and it ends up with Gibson, who gets the layup to give the Mounties a four-point lead. Great finish in traffic. Bree Boyd, meanwhile, has returned. But Tay Adams can wait no longer. It's her leading scorer back on the floor. Step back for Cruz Martinez. Missed everything. Shot clock winding down, and Vikings just had to force one up. Yeah, and a rock and a hard place there with the shot clock. And that's a terrific defensive set there from Mount Sack. Isabella Roderick heads to the bench as Diaz checks in. I want to correct myself. It was Roderick moments ago who kept that ball alive and it ended up with Gibson. So big play for Isabella Roderick. And Roderick, interesting, started the year uh, in the starting lineup, then moved to the bench for a while uh, before coming back to the starting lineup. But the Mounties undefeated with Isabella Roderick in the starting lineup this season. So that's a move that has worked for Brian Critchlow. Pass deflected, but it ends up with Moncrief, who has that one stripped by Marino. Moncrief momentarily looked like she might have a chance. Duncan threads it through, layup no good. On the offensive glass, layup won't go again. Vikings still working hard. Travel. Boyd in a crowd, Riv Richardson with the tie-up, and here comes the jump ball. That's, that's a travel. Yeah, I mean, there's no question there. The whistle's a little late. Uh, the feet are definitely moving, whether arguably it could have been called a jump ball before the feet moved, certainly. Right. But in the absence of that. But eventually they do call the jump ball. Marino stops and pops and hits. That's a tough shot, story. Giselle Man. Marino with 10. That leads the Vikings. Vikings back within two. One dribble left, stop, pop, and that is like Clay Thompson. Bolden. 
Gibson. Mitchell will try for three, rimming no. Rebound off to O'Kenwa. Here come the Vikings. Boyd working against Richardson down Offense. low. Offensive foul, Richardson. A pretty good able look to draw the story. offensive foul. Uh, just terrific positioning. And Richardson draws the, the charge call, not sack ball. Just the second on Boyd. 2-11 and counting remaining in the third quarter. Bolden, checked by Robinson. Mitchell has that uh, one stripped by Moreno. Too much dribbling. Well, we mentioned the job that the Mounties have done on Bree Boyd, but tonight the Vikings have done a tremendous job on Deja Mitchell, who has just six. Okenwa's runner off the side of the board, but a foul going to be called on Diaz. And Okenwa going to head to the line, and it's a tough foul for the Mounties because, Mike, I think you'd love to take your chances on Okenwa being able to knock down that shot. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a bailout foul for sure. Just keep your hands up. You see her kind of swing her hands up at the end of that play. A pretty good look over here. Let's look at it one more time underneath. And right there is the contact. If she's just straight up the entire time moving her feet, uh, I don't think that's going to get called considering the way it's been called throughout this game. Meanwhile, another missed free throw. Yeah, and the huge. Vikings are now two of six at the line in the game. I mean, that'd be good for a two-point lead right now if they hit on all of them. Another one. And another miss. So two of seven as a team as Okenwa comes up empty. Now he's maintained the two-point lead. Gibson looking to feed Gibson, but again, they get a hand in and a foul in the backcourt. Jeff, it's just a lazy pass here. I mean, the defense is sucked in. You, you, you can't have I mean, there's two people there. Like, who are you throwing it at? Yeah, I think Gibson's already made up her mind where she's going with that ball, and it's a good read by Bree Boyd. Able to get a hand in, knock that free, and then the foul committed in the backcourt by Gibson, her first, the fourth, on the Mounties. Cruz Martinez. Okenwa. Boyd. Good feed, and Boyd lays it up and in. She's got eight in the quarter and nine in the game. It's good action. Tied at 41. High low. Executed perfectly. Moncrief beats Mitchell. Up top, Richardson. Moncrief. Drops it off, skip pass, Bolden for three, no. But right to Moncrief who lays it up and in. Moncrief coming off a big performance in the win against Mesa, 15.7 rebounds. Terrific job by Moncrief following that up. Everybody just lost her. She goes back in for the putback. The back to Mount Sac, 43-41. It's about a 14 second difference, shot clock and game clock. That pass too hard for Marino. Too hot. Yep. Okenwa had the right idea. Shot clock turned off here. Now the Mounties can play for the final shot. They'll bring the pressure, and now we've got, that looks like it might be Deja Mitchell, and who just went down. And they are going to look at her, and we're going to step aside here late in the third, 43-41 in favor of the Mounties.
story. We're going to get to our thank yous later, but uh, Auntie Tony, uh, Coach Critchlow's auntie, uh, very kind enough to allow us into the VIP suite. And here we go on the floor as we, they attend to the injured player, but did want to give a shout out uh, to the catering this evening. Yes, while you were setting that up, I was too busy eating. <laughs> 15 seconds remaining in the third. So Deja Mitchell to the sidelines. We're able to get her up and Bolden around a Diaz screen. And there is uh, Auntie Tony, the VIP area. Incredible facility here on the campus of Mount Sac, and we'll be here next week for the 3C28 State 8. And I think for uh, more than a few years to come. Bolden outside, down to four seconds. Richardson pulls up from 15, no. Rebound off to Bolden, who missed. Through three, the Mounties on top, 43-41. Regional Finals, 3C2A Playoffs here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. starting to assert themselves on the boards through three quarters. They're now on top 30 to 23. But the news not all great. 19 turnovers through three quarters for the Mounties to just 13 for the Vikings. Bolden on the floor with Alexis Brown. And Moncrief on a Diaz and Delani Richardson to start the fourth. This is Richardson. In the corner, Brown will fire for three, just short. Long rebound, tracked down by Marino. Marino closing in on a double-double herself. She's got 10 points to go along with nine rebounds. Cruz Martinez leans over the dribble. Checked by Anissa Moncrief. Looking for an Okenwa screen. Little hesitation on Diaz. Now puts up a little floater. Cruz Martinez, everybody looking for the pass. Cruz Martinez finds an opening for the shot. Tied at 43. Garcia up tight on Carly Bolden. Bolden's got 12 to lead the Mounties. Richardson open for three, in and out. Diaz trying to keep it alive, and they're gonna say this is off the Vikings. I think that's right. Should have a good look, boy. Richardson now three of nine. Yeah, that's right. That's a correct call. Yeah, off of Okenwa from three-point range. But, like, that is an awfully good look for Delani Richardson. So the Vikings living a little bit dangerously. Bolden around the Moncrief screen. That pass too long in Okenwa there. Another turnover for the Mounties. Cruz Martinez into the front court. She'll peel it back out. Tight defense by Alexis Brown. Okenwa. Travel. A mismatch on Richardson. Hard drive. Lays it in. Where's the travel? Shioma Okenwa goes so, right at Delani Richardson. How, how is that not a travel? And Okenwa. Clear shuffle. Now with 10 in the game and a timeout on the floor as the Vikings again come out quickly to start a quarter. Four straight to start the fourth quarter. 8-20 remaining. The Vikings on top. 45-43. The 3 c 2 a playoffs, the regional finals on SoCalCollegeSports.com.
top seed, Mount San Antonio College, trailing by two early in the fourth. Spawn in the state eight on the line. One team has punched their ticket up north, the top seed, Butte College, into the state eight. Richardson step back, three rims high, no good. Rebound on the floor. Carly Bolden chases it down. Mounties continue to have the edge. On the boards, Brown with the drive, blocked by Okenwa. Couple of looks for the Mounties, but they come up empty. Long pass ahead to Boyd, lays it in. Bree Boyd having unquestionably her best game of the season against the Mounties. At just the right time, Good she's time. got 11, 10 in the second half. Mentioned that she had struggled from the floor, shooting under 30% in the first three matchups. But she's 6 of 10 here tonight. She's got 13 points. You know, Mount Sac really bailed, bailed out by Richardson <laughs> earlier in this uh, in, in the second half. And that's why they were able to get that lead early in that third quarter. And Mount Sac now down by four. Richardson over to the last couple of triples she's attempted. But I think, Michael, it's, it's a shot that she's absolutely got to keep taking because she's open and it's in the flow of the offense. This is That's in the clock. corner to Richardson and a push from Marino. So Richardson back up and I think it's a good look at it there and that's the momentum of Marino yeah. taking her into Richardson nothing malicious but when you add in the rivalry aspect yeah yeah really I mentioned easy. at the top 31st meeting between these two teams double pump from Moncrief won't go but she gets her own rebound gotta get out of the key off to Roderick double team comes from Cruz Martinez able to tap it back out to Gibson a couple of near steals for the Vikings but the Mounties with another chance Moncrief Bolden driving on Robinson. Runner off the glass is good. Bolden. Man. Unconscious. She's got 14. Look at this move here. That's not an easy shot. Yeah, a little double pump. You know, Cruz Martinez nearly loses the handle. Yeah. Now around Bolden. Finds Robinson open from 15. Marino on the offensive glass. Another chance. Missed it again. Fourth opportunity off the bottom of the board. It just can't happen. Two new can't convert. Mounties want to run, but Boyd gets a hand in. It's got to be a bounce pass there. To deflect story. the pass. Yeah. Well, the bounce, Vikings. Bounce pass, that's a layup. Had all kinds of chances on the previous set to extend on the lead. Well, Jeff, the, the real difference here has been the transition defense. For Long Beach, pretty good that time. You see them force the ball to go out of bounds. On the other side, transition defense just has not been there for Mount Sac and multiple second chance opportunities. Can't have it. Bolden outside to Gibson. Bolden, Gibson, Richardson. Moncrief That's on cut. the cut. Lays it in. Anissa Moncrief ties it at 47. Just to finish, it's Moncrief and Isabella Roderick rounding out the five on the floor for the Mounties. Cruz Martinez. Hooks it into Okenwa. Where's Boyd Okenwa? open for three, rimming no good. Rebound, tapped around, controlled by Cruz Martinez. Another offensive rebound. Good feed to Boyd who forces one up and in. That's great body control for Bree Boyd who's got 15. And more than a little strength, Michael, for Bree Boyd to get that ball up and in. Cruz Martinez has the steal. She's got Robinson, but she'll take it herself and lays it in. Steal and the layup for Cruz Martinez. Vikings back out in front by four. 522 and counting remaining. Plenty of time here, Story, but you get the feeling that a Richards, Richardson three would be well timed here. Roderick from the free throw line. Caroms off and it ends up with Cruz Martinez. Martinez into the front court. They have numbers. It's a three on two. Hands off to Marino, who lays it up and in. Wheels are coming off here for Mount Sack. Yeah, Brian Critchlow going to burn a timeout as the Vikings back out to a six-point lead with 4.59 remaining. It's the regional finals 
from Mount San Antonio College on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Six-point run for the Vikings. Well, we often talk about it, Michael. It is hard to keep beating a team over and over again, especially a, a team that uh, once you get to this level in the playoffs, uh, among the best teams in the three, C2A obviously remaining, and uh, the Mounties trying to make it four straight against a very good Viking team. And now they trail it by six. Midway through the fourth quarter, Bolden directs traffic. Richardson, they'll look for Mitchell. Mitchell has that one stuffed, but a blocking call on Okenwa. And Mike, Deja Mitchell, I think it's interesting. She can take that shot from about 15 feet, but appeared to be determined to get something going toward the basket. And With the third team foul on Long Beach City, 440 to go. Once they, one more foul, then they'll be in the bonus. Yeah, the Mounties, no team fouls. Here in the fourth quarter is Deja Mitchell, who has had a quiet night so far here tonight. Hits the free throw. That is her first point in the second half. She's got seven in the game to go along with six rebounds. The margin for error very thin here, Stoy. Averaging just under 20 points a game on the season against the Vikings. And I mentioned earlier here in the second half that uh, among the storylines talking about Bray Boyd is the job that the Vikings have done slowing down Deja Mitchell. Mitchell left earlier with an apparent injury, uh, but is back on the floor. So obviously that's a great sign as well. Yeah, I think she just banged her knee. Yeah, they were working on the legs and obviously we careful not to speculate any further than that. Boyd misses. In close, rebound and partially deflected, but it ends up with Boyd. Goes to the right hand, shot is short, and Roderick in to snap down the board. Moncrief nearly lost it, but is able to save. Huge. <clears throat> Four-point lead for the Vikings. Now he's getting all they can handle here from the nine seed. Moncrief, Roderick fakes. Feeds it down low, has that shot blocked, and a late whistle. Who's this going to be on? Again, as they find Mitchell, but watch Tunu. Yeah, she gets her head. I mean, that she gets the ball, but she clearly gets her head. Excuse me, that was Giselle Marino on the block and committing the foul. It's the third foul. Well, they're going to call this on Boyd. I think it's interesting that that was Boyd who ended up picking up the foul. Well, we were watching Giselle Marino on the block. Either way, Mitchell doesn't get the roll. You know what she would have said. Right, yeah. <laughs> so true. It is amazing how truthful that ball is. 0 for 2 for that's Mitchell, and, and in that's the corner... And the foul committed by Okenwa this time. Great job in terms of pursuit on this ball. I mean, that, that free throw wasn't close, but Okenwa with the foul. Moncrief going to the line. So Anissa Moncrief has six in the game. Go along with seven rebounds and four assists. 
She is a 45% foul shoot. Misses on the first free throw. Well, now both teams struggling. The Mounties had been six of seven from the line, but now they've missed their last three. Moncrief misses again. And Roderick over the back commits the foul. That's just the first on the Mounties here in the fourth quarter. But what the Mounties had gained with all the missed free throws by the Vikings earlier in this second half, they give back there as they miss four straight at the line and the lead remains four for the Vikings. Still plenty of time, 342 and counting. Bolden pressuring Cruz Martinez, and this is off of Bolden. Wow. Near steal. Well, Kimberly Cruz Martinez has done a tremendous job against the pressure here tonight. But Bolden, right on top of her, had the near steal. Picked up by Richardson, runner from Cruz Martinez, around and out. Marino tries to keep it alive, and the whistles oh. come in. And you get Richardson. Delani Richardson commits the foul. Now, is this a non-shooting foul, or is that a late call? It should be a non-shooting foul. Came on the rebound. No. This is loose ball foul. What are they doing? Or is that Shoot. a very late whistle oh, on Richardson? Oh, no, okay, no, no, all right, all right. So, they're going to say baseline out of bounds. It does look like she's trying to put that ball up on the rim, Stoy. This is an interesting call. Because initially I would have said, okay, it's going to be based on out of bounds, but upon further review, it looked like there was a shooting motion involved. Mount Sack gets away with one. They'll bring it in. Baseline right. They overshoot Tunu, and Tunu will have to chase it down. She's allowed to do that. Fresh shot clock for the Vikings, so they've still got a lot of time. Nice to Tunu holding. Good position, Boyd backing in down low. Roderick comes on the double and is able to block it and come away. Great defense. Isabella Roderick, the big defensive play. Bolden on the drive. Back outside to Richardson. Moncrief over to Mitchell, shot clock at 12. Skips it down low, Moncrief has that shot blocked. Roderick working on the boards. But a whistle comes in. It's going back to the Vikings. It's a great find. She just kind of short-armed it, Stoy. Yeah, I think Moncrief just never quite had that ball. Not a good look. The Vikings get it back. 2.52 remaining. Bree Boyd on the bench for the Vikings. With two new in the game. And a whistle before the shot. They can get Bolden. Yeah, they're going to get Bolden with a push. She's really just riding her. Fourth team foul for the Mounties. So now it's free throws the rest of the way for both teams. Cruz Martinez open down low, but Bolden able to get back. Good recovery. Shot clock at 15. Looking for a high screen from Okenwa. Okenwa will fire from 15. Rimming no. Rebound off to Deja Mitchell. Been stuck on 53-49 for a while. Bolden leaves it for Mitchell. Mitchell scoops and scores. Deja Mitchell with eight. 53-51. Mounties back within two. The lead had been six for the Vikings. Trying to hook that pass into traffic. Mitchell got a hand on it, but the Vikings keep it. Okenwa finds Marino, runner too strong. Rebound pulled down by Roderick and a foul in the backcourt as they battle for the rebound. There's bodies everywhere. Looks like Mitchell is back down again. Well, she continues to have problems with the lower leg. Well, Mitchell here, a terrific job on the finish with the left hand. See, Mitchell's already down here at that point in this play, but 
Mounties with a chance here to tie things up. This can be a loose ball foul against Long Beach. The two shots come. It'll be Isabella Roderick heading to the line. Mitchell is up. Roderick shoots 62% from the line, averaging 5.3 points per game. Big free throws coming with 150 remaining. Oh, and she coolly hits the first. One more coming. Another big response from both teams. Moments ago, the lead was six. The Vikings appeared to have the momentum, but Brian Critchlow Calls a timeout, able to settle his team down, and they have responded. Six straight tie game, under two minutes to go. Spot in the state eight on the line here at Mount Sac. Mitchell with a sensational play, able to come up with the steal. Well, she could beat you so many ways. Done it all year long. That time it was a huge defensive play. Now he's looking for the lead. Great nice screen. screen from Roderick. Bolden on the drive. Off to Richardson. Shot clock down to six. Richardson, Boyd gets a hand in. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Mounties, but the shot clock is at three. Have to be so aware of a cutter here, Michael. Look for Moncrief here. Still looking to bring it in. Richardson in the corner, forces up the three. Long rebound. Bolden has it. Another chance for the Mounties. Big offensive rebound. After a strong defensive set for the Vikings, they can't secure the rebound. Mitchell finds the cutter. Oh. Roderick missed the layup. Too much. Okenwa has the rebound. We're under a minute to go. You got to regroup. Got to get back. Now it's Moncrief on Cruz Martinez. Cruz Martinez still dancing. Feeds it down low. Travel. Boyd lays it in. Where's the travel? Bree Boyd with 33.6 remaining. We'll take another look. Yeah, Michael, was that a switch of the pivot foot is what it looked like because it looked like both feet she has maybe it here. moved. Has it? There's and one. And she then moved that it. Left, yeah. She moves her left foot. I mean, that's a clear travel. Yeah, I think she establishes that left foot, but then that foot appeared to come in the air before. That shot was up and good, but the call stands. Boyd with 16 points in the second half. She's got 17 overall, and, uh, you know, Micah, uh, Call or no call, uh, it, it's a great set from the Vikings. They find Boyd point blank, and uh, maybe it's a little a little benefit on the call, but she still converts and gives the Vikings the lead with 33.6 remaining. That was Mount Sac taking another. Now, was that timeout called by Mount Sac? Are we taking another one here? Yeah, the Vikings with one timeout remaining. The Mounties with two. Boyd with 17 to lead the way. Giselle Marino with 12. Kimberly Cruz Martinez with 10. Meanwhile, Carly Bolden with 14. For the Mounties, Delani Richardson with 11. And Deja Mitchell with 10. So... Both teams uh, really as advertised. Uh, that's what we uh, saw uh, all season long. But again, you, you just have to give it to Bree Boyd. Uh, just one point in the first half on this against this team that has done such a good job defending her all season long. But uh, in this second half, she has been so determined uh, to lead this team to a spot in the state eight. And she has the Vikings 33 seconds away. And where do you go if you're the Mounties? Few options here, but you've got to believe, Michael, that Deja Mitchell is going to get a touch. 
It's a 3.6 second difference shot clock and game clock. Moncrief will bring it in. Bolden around the high screen from Mitchell. Bolden back out Mitchell. Shot from 18 off the back Got iron. Foul. Garcia Got a foul. secures the rebound. You have to foul. No shot clock, so indeed they do foul in the backcourt. It's Kimberly Cruz Martinez who will head to the line with 16.6 remaining, and the Vikings have struggled from the line so far in this one. Cruz Martinez herself is 0 for 2 from the line. Overall, the Vikings are 2 of 7 at the line. But a chance for Kimberly Cruz Martinez, if she can hit two here, to turn it into a two possession game. First free throw up and good. 11 in the game for Kimberly Cruz Martinez. One more coming. Up and good. That is icy from Kimberly Cruz Martinez. Steps to the line, buries a couple of free throws, and the Vikings now lead it by four with 16.6 remaining timeout on the floor. You're watching the 3C2A Regional Finals here on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Bolden, down to 16 seconds. Mounties have to hurry. Richardson in the weave, and Cruz Martinez gets the feet tangled up. She's going to pick up the foul. Meanwhile, Richardson went down hard, and she is still down. They're going to help her up. Obviously, nothing intentional, but nonetheless, Richardson has to steady herself. And Mike, it's not the easiest situation after you hit the floor hard to get to the line and get yourself settled in for a couple of big free throws. This is an opportunity for the Mounties to put some points on the board without the clock moving down to 10.2, but you've got to hit your free throws, and Richardson does. Average is 16.6 a game. She's an 83% foul shooter. Got one more coming. Trying to get this back to two, and every point so big. Doesn't get the roll, and Boyd snatches down the board. And the Vikings going to quickly burn a timeout, and that's a big miss at the line. Again, for the Vikings, now just one free throw puts it back to two possessions. Fifty-seven, fifty-four, with 9.2 remaining. It's the 3C2A playoffs, the regional finals on SoCalCollegeSports.com. Giselle Marino will bring it in. Well, it's hard to imagine they don't want to get the ball back in the hands of Kimberly Cruz Martinez. 
who shoots 71% from the line, but just buried a couple of big free throws moments ago. Instead, they'll lob looking for Boyd. It's a dangerous pass, but Boyd gets it. And now the foul called as Bolden finally able to commit the foul with 6.2 remaining. But that was an incredibly dangerous pass coming in. Near steal for Deja Mitchell. And I think once again, as they get it into Cruz Martinez, after indeed they had called the jump ball, not a foul, so it stayed with the Vikings, but going back to the pass, looking to get the ball to Bree Boyd and nearly coughed it up. And it was Boyd who was able to just tap that ball free, keep it alive, and ultimately tap it to herself. So Cruz Martinez, a chance to perhaps put this one away and nothing but net on the first free throw. Now this is a clinic in knocking down free throws uh, to put a game on ice. Barely moved the net four straight from Cruz Martinez who is in the process, if not completing, slamming the door on the Mounties here in 2024. Vikings lead it by five with 4.4 remaining. And, and if we keep it here, Michael, we, we, we do want to make sure that we pass along some thank yous. Uh, uh, again, uh, such a tremendous facility here. And uh, uh, Joe Jenham, uh, Kenny Walter here at Mount San Antonio College. And uh, uh, looking forward to not just working tonight, but again, we'll be here next week uh, to cover the State 8, the 3C2A championships once again, and we'll be back in this uh, terrific facility once again. But uh, everybody here at Mount San Antonio College has always done such a good job making us uh, feel welcome, uh, helping us with whatever we need to uh, get a broadcast going, and we look forward to that uh, next week, but uh, certainly again here tonight. Yeah, uh, Tammy Not Silva, um, also part of the staff here at Mount Sac, an incredible facility along with an incredible staff. and. Uh, happy to be back here for coverage of more 3C2A championship events. And the Mounties were hoping to go after that championship on their home floor. But with 4.4 remaining, they're going to need something spectacular. Down five. Otherwise, it's the Vikings who will finally solve the riddle of the Mounties and move to the State 8 themselves. Mitchell will fire for three and hit, but it's at the buzzer. That will close out the season, but the Mounties will fall two points short as the Vikings punch their ticket. They are on to the State 8 with a 59-57 win. Twelve straight wins for the Vikings, who will come in perhaps as something of a Cinderella, but... There can be no doubt uh, that this is a team uh, that has earned their place and is a factor uh, to uh, move on in that State 8 from there. They finally find a way to get past the Mounties, meeting for the fourth time this season. And the Vikings get the win 59-57. Kimberly Cruz Martinez, the big free throws down the stretch. Bree Boyd, the big second half with 16 points. And uh, Mike, I, maybe just a final word here, but uh, it, it really was a tremendous game uh, from start to finish. Ebbs and flows in this one, and both teams uh, showed great resilience uh, just battling all game long here. And uh, ultimately, it's the Vikings that are able to uh, finish it out. Hot rivalry here in the South Coast Conference, and uh, you know, kudos to this Long Beach City Viking squad. They advanced to the state eight. Uh, terrific execution, uh, and they hit the bigger shots down the stretch. In addition to that, just so aggressive on the offensive boards. You know, how many times were we saying, you know, third, fourth chance opportunities? Uh, and Mount Sac really didn't have an answer. And Mitchell going out, I think, obviously hurt them in that regard. Uh, she's such a force down low uh, in terms of getting those rebounds, cleaning up the glass, and Long Beach capitalized when they needed to, and they move on. You know, you saw briefly there as we had the shot down on the floor, uh, acting head coach Tay Adams, but uh, 
Uh, you know, it should be, didn't have a lot of chance to talk about her, but obviously what a job uh, she has done at Long Beach City College, uh, getting this young team really led by three freshmen uh, for the most part in Cruz Martinez, Giselle Marino, and, and Bree Boyd. Uh, this is a team that at one point was eight and nine. Now they're 20 and nine. It's 12 wins in a row, including the big win here in the regional final to head to the state eight. That'll wrap up our coverage from Mount San Antonio College. Long Beach, a 59-57 winner for everybody here at SoCal College Sports. Thanks so much for joining us. So long, everybody.